Anyone wishing to broaden their own horizons would do well to poke their nose into a book from time to time. Well, this only applies if we are able to decode the text in front of us. Things are quite different in the case of the mysterious Voynich manuscript. With its cryptic characters, the medieval document presents us with unsolvable riddles to this day. But what content is really hidden in it? Wherever people are at their wit's end, the support of artificial intelligence is needed, and with the help of AI, the researchers actually made a sensational breakthrough for the first time. You want to know what mysteries of the manuscript have been uncovered? Stay tuned and see for yourself. Also, be sure to hit the like button and ring the notification bell for more videos. The Voynich Manuscript while the Voynich Manuscript has always been a subject of many questions, there are some things we do know about the mysterious document. While the script used has always been an unsolved mystery, there is no question that the text was handwritten. An examination of the material showed that the parchment most likely dates from 1404 to 1438, a chronological classification that also coincides with the style of the illustrations. Which brings us to an essential point is, since the experts have not yet been able to decode the cryptic characters, the insight are the only thing that could give us an insight into the true content. As a result, the individual sections seem to deal with subjects such as herbalism, astronomy, anatomy, and medicine. The name of the manuscript, which is still used today, goes back to the Polish collector William Michael Voynich. According to his own statements, he tracked down the manuscript in 1912 in an old southern European castle. After Voynich's death in 1930, the document passed into the possession of his wife, who later sold it to a bookseller, Hans Peter Krauss, for a whopping $25,000. Krauss actually wanted to resell the enigmatic document for a profit, but nobody seemed to be interested in the cryptic code, so it was that the manuscript was donated to Yale University in 1969 where it is kept to this day. However, it is completely unknown who created the work. In view of the diffuse facts, some researchers even believe that the document has no meaningful content at all. However, countless other, sometimes self-proclaimed experts, tried to bring the hidden knowledge back to light. In the AI Although the world's best cryptographers set out to crack the code of the Voynich's manuscript, no expert recorded a major breakthrough that clearly stood up to scientific scrutiny. As mentioned earlier, the document was recently targeted by cutting-edge technology, more specifically by the Artificial Intelligence Laboratory at the University of Alberta. The employees of the renowned Canadian Research Institute were initially not concerned with revealing the content of the work but rather with finding out which language they were actually dealing with here. In the run-up to the investigations, the scientists assumed that the manuscript was written in Arabic. To test this thesis, the experts used an AI capable of identifying 380 different languages with an accuracy of 97%. However, after the data was fed into the program, the experts received surprising news. The text of the document was written in Hebrew. When the astonishment of the researchers had subsided a little, they began to set up theories about the typeface used. So it is conceivable that the words embody alphagrams, in which the letters were mixed up and some vowels were left out. After analyzing the first line of text in the manuscript, against this background, they found that 80% of the words they uncovered actually appear in the Hebrew vocabulary. However, since none of the researchers knew the ancient language, Colleague and computer scientist Moshe Koppel, whose native language is Hebrew, was consulted. So it happened that the other scientists were glued to Koppel's every word, but he delivered a rather sobering message. The individual words do not form a coherent sentence. After the team corrected some of the weird spelling mistakes and ran the line through a translator, at least something readable came out of it, though it didn't really make much sense. In detail, the sentence can be translated as follows. She gave recommendations to the priest, the householder, and me, and the people. The examination of another passage also brought some linguistic bright spots to light. The 72-word section contained terms such as light, fire, air, and pawn, 
Do these groundbreaking findings mean we have finally solved the mystery of the Voynich Manuscript? It is only a matter of time before we manage to decipher the clues and put them together into an insightful overall picture. Well, not necessarily. Accordingly, the approach taken by the Canadian scientists have been heavily criticized by other Voynich scholars. Instead of consulting a Hebrew pro, they used Google Translate to decipher the text. Accordingly, some researchers in social networks were skeptical. Interpretations and Failures It has almost become a tradition that many experts frown at what are supposed to be Voynich manuscript translations. In fact, over the years, some people have attracted attention who claim to have unraveled the unknown letter form. In truth, the corresponding list is so numerous that it would go beyond the scope of our video to present all the supposed findings to you. So let's take a look at a few selected examples. One of the more recent cases occurred in 2017 when recreational codebreaker Nicholas Gibbs claimed that the book's contents were made up of Latin abbreviations. After this statement, however, it wasn't long before the first Latin professionals appeared on the scene and stated that Gibbs' abbreviation hypothesis had no grammatically sound background. Because the Voynich manuscript contains many illustrations of plants and women bathing, some researchers suspect that we are dealing with a medical textbook on women's health. In this regard, however, the two art historians, Lee Carl Krusey and Christopher Eggenberger, have a slightly different view. Accordingly, a profound symbolism would hide behind the representations, which has a socially critical character. In detail, the discrepancy between the disenfranchised and the nobility would be denounced. The thesis that Torsten Tim put forward about Voinovich manuscript seems much less spectacular, given the fact that the text hardly contains any corrections and that every sentence fits perfectly at the end of the line. Tim believes that the fictional typeface arose on its own and conveyed no content at all. Voinovich's heirs but what did the namesake Wilfred Voinovich actually have to say about the document he rediscovered? Well, the poll was less concerned with the question of what is written in the document than with its origin. At the time, the antiquarian was convinced that the text had been written by Roger Bacon. However, the fact that the English Franciscan monk and philosopher died around 1292 blatantly contradicts the age determination of the parchment. Wilfred Voynich left the task of uncovering the contents of the manuscript to others. To this end, he sent numerous copies to experts who, in his opinion, were better studied for this field of research. One of them was William Romain Newbold, who was then teaching philosophy at the University of Pennsylvania. Within hours after examining the cryptic characters, Newbold believed he had found a decryption key. As a result, it would be a matter of so-called micro-writing. The true content of the manuscript is not hidden in the unknown characters, but in their microscopically small irregularities. Viewed in this way, it would result in an ancient Greek text that Newbold actually claims to have translated. From the content, it was clear that Robert Bacon was in fact the author of the Voynich manuscript. But that's not all. The Briton allegedly already owned a microscope. Briefly on the historical classification, officially, the first microscope was developed around 300 years after Bacon's death. The spiral structure of the Andromeda Nebula was already known to the author in the 13th century. Once this startling information was gathered, Voynich and Newbold presented it to the public in a series of lectures. However, it soon became apparent that the further decoding of the text was much more difficult than the two had hoped. In the end, fate decreed that Newbold never finished his work. Even before he could provide Wilfred Voynich with a complete translation, he died unexpectedly in 1926. What was initially celebrated as a sensational success soon came under the scrutiny of critical skeptics. Among them was John Matthew Manley, who in a 1931 article took a dim view of Newbold's research. In doing so, he took the position that the alleged micro-writing did not exist at all. Accordingly, the apparent irregularities do not embody a hidden code, but are merely the result of traces of ink and rough parchment. In addition, the microprint can only be decrypted with a method used by Newbold if its content is known in advance. However, since Newbold did not know what secrets the manuscript concealed, he only searched for what he hoped to find himself. The Vivian Girls 
The Voynich Manuscript isn't the only mysterious book that has been discovered over the years. In fact, more than a few books have been found that are completely shrouded in mystery. The Story of the Vivian Girls is a 15,000-page book typed in 15 separate volumes, created over the course of six decades. Henry Darger illustrated these stories by tracing photos he had cut from magazines and arranging them into cinematic landscapes, with some illustrations being over 30 feet wide. He even wrote himself into the stories as a guardian of children. The largest portion of this book details the lives of seven princesses who are fighting against child slavery in their kingdom. The children establish an army in order to defeat the evil overlords, all of which takes place on a planet that orbits Earth as a moon. Henry Darger was once placed in an asylum at a very young age. Once released, he repeatedly attempted to adopt a child, but was unable to do so. It may sound a little bit creepy nowadays, but Henry said that seeing photos of children helped to fuel his aspiration of wanting to be a father. Specifically, a photo of a five-year-old murder victim from Chicago. The girl had apparently left home, telling her mother she was going to visit her aunt. She was last seen playing with her cousins, and her body was found a month later in a sewage drain. Her autopsy revealed that she had likely been suffocated, a finding that deeply angered Darger. The girl's photo was one of many that Darger had kept in his personal collection. Darger never knew any of the children in these photographs personally, but he kept a deep connection with them nonetheless. At one point, while working as a janitor, his locker was broken into, and a few of his photos were stolen. In response to this, he wrote in his journal that a huge disaster and calamity will never be atoned for, but shall be avenged to the utmost limit. Though Henry searched for months to track down the 1911 newspaper that it had come from, the photo was never found. This theft, along with the girl's murder, served as an inspiration for the story behind Darger's novel. He had apparently been working on the plot for quite some time, but after the photo was stolen, he became consumed by his creation, causing him to dedicate more and more time to the books, as well as their illustrations. Henry had been praised for his use of vibrant colors, as well as his captivating landscapes incorporated in the books. Long after Henry's death, these books were eventually turned into a feature-length film, using scans of many of his original illustrations. In regards to the children's motive for freedom, Darger mentions in the book that they are led by the desire to play, to be happy, and to dream, the right to normal sleep of the night season, the right to an education, that we may have equal opportunity for developing all that in us, of mind and of heart. The Rohans Codex one of the most mysterious books in existence today is a book known as the Rohans Codex. Not only do we have no idea what it says or what purpose it serves, but we also have no idea where it came from. In the early 1800s, the book was donated to the Hungarian Academy of Sciences in the city of Rohant, but that's as far back as the book can be traced. One of the many reasons that the Codex has remained undeciphered for such a long time is due to its alphabet. Most alphabets have between 20 and 40 characters, making it relatively easy to begin replacing symbols with letters, leading to a quick and easy deciphering process. However, the Rohant Codex has nearly 200 separate symbols in its almost 450 pages. Numerous scholars have attempted to decipher the book over recent years, but none have been successful or seemingly even come close. No one can even pinpoint where the book originated from geographically. Most people's best guess is either Hungary, Romania, or India. In total, the Rohant Codex contains exactly 448 pages of indecipherable text, which is similar to the old Hungarian script, as both are written in right-to-left orientation and have very similar series of letters. Investigators believe that the writing could be anything from Hindi to Old Hungarian, although it appears to lack features from either of those languages. The number of different symbols used, as mentioned previously, is also excessively high, with more than 10 times the amount of symbols that are found in any known alphabet. Additionally, the papers within Codex have a rather unique characteristic. They have all been watermarked. Each page contains a single watermark, which has the appearance of an anchor, which is within a circle within a six-rayed star. The watermark itself is believed to have been done around 1529 to 1540 AD, though the actual codex is believed to have been written significantly earlier than that. Because of this, it has become extremely difficult to determine exactly when the text was written, though it's possible that the book was transcribed after the initial creation. Finally, 
The codex contains a bit more than just written text. It also houses 87 illustrations depicting military battles, landscapes, and religious icons, among other things, which are said to hint at several different religions, including Christianity, Hinduism, and Islam. Some have interpreted this to show that whichever culture was responsible for creating the text was one in which the three religions were popular. Because this code is so unusually impressive, many scholars of the 19th century actually concluded it to be a hoax. Though in recent years, many believe it's completely genuine. If you'd like to take a look at the codex, it's widely available online, and I really encourage you to do so, as it is extremely interesting. What do you think of the insights that artificial intelligence provided about the Voynich manuscript? Will we one day be able to translate the document, or will the document remain a mystery of the past forever? Let your thoughts run wild and share them with us in the comments. Please also give us a thumbs up and subscribe to stay up to date from now on. And with that, thanks for watching. Take care and see you next time.